To me, really is what made this location work for us, having that large outdoor venue that is unique to Manhattan. We, we wanted something that you felt like you were hanging out in your backyard or you're at a nice resort outside somewhere. I, I think a lot of people in our society are kind of taught as a child um, to avoid failure. I, I think that's a good thing. That's, that's when you learn, that's when you grow. You never know what's gonna happen. Um, I, I think the, I would have more regrets if this is what I wanted to do and I didn't pursue it. What's going on everybody? Kyle Powers here, Haven Real Estate Group at eXp Realty, here with another episode of Local Legends of the Flint Hills, where business meets community. I've got a very special guest here with me, the owner of Aggieville Brewing Company, Ryan Emley. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for joining me today, man. Absolutely, yeah. we're uh, glad to be a part of this. Yeah, no, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to get going into it. I, we've talked a lot off camera here, but I, I'm excited for you to tell your story. So um, talk to us a little bit about where this seed of a, of a business came from, right? Like, when, what, why did you decide to start Aggieville Brewing Company? Yeah, um, so really it, it came back to kind of a, a hobby of mine. Yeah. Started home brewing when I was 21, um, just something I picked up in my spare time. And I don't know, about two or three years into it, it really became a, a passion of mine and decided to go professional with it. So I uh, started working at Tallgrass Brewing Company here about nine years ago, uh, got my foot in the door and wife and I ended up moving to Colorado and that's really where kind of the bulk of my knowledge and experience uh, stem from that, that kind of led us to this point. But really being out there, we saw just how great the craft brewing industry is, how communal it is. And being from Manhattan, my wife and I are both from Manhattan. We grew up here, our family's here. We really felt like we could add something new to Manhattan and bring something uh, back, I guess, from our experience in Colorado. So yeah. um, we went through many ideas over about a four or five year time that we were out there in Colorado and looked at multiple different locations here in town over the years and, and finally felt like we, we had the right opportunity and, and the right time to do this. With Manhattan being such a I guess transient community between Fort Riley uh, and Kansas State University. We always have students and military families moving in and out of town. We we felt like there was room for another brewery, something different to build on what Manhattan Brewing Company and Tallgrass Tap House have done here, sure. and and felt like the market was still open um, for another brewery here in Manhattan, and and that we could bring something new. A uh, little bit different, different environment, different atmosphere, and and really add to the community here. And you know, this this is where we wanted to raise our family. This is where we wanted to be. And having that brewing background, um, that was always a goal of mine to open a brewery. So Manhattan just made sense for us. Yeah. No, I love that, and and, and I think it's been a, a it's been a fun journey to kind of see outside looking in obviously kind of seeing what you guys have have kind of gone through uh getting the building getting the space where you wanted to so i guess i gotta ask it and we can cut it if you want but i gotta ask it um the name aggieville brewing company do you want to talk about the story of that because we're outside over the viaduct where did that come from and and how did that come about here absolutely and that was uh i guess the initial plan for us was to be in aggieville we, we really liked the market down there. We felt like the changes that are happening to establishing more family friendly, not just college bar atmosphere, we wanted to be a part of that. And so that was the original plan. Um, we, we spent a little bit of time, probably six months, uh, trying to go into the old Goose or Pizza Hut building down there. And it was, it was lacking space. Sure. Uh, the, the equipment, the brewing equipment takes up a lot of space. There was not gonna be a lot of room for growth for us there. Um, so we decided to look elsewhere. Uh, the building that we settled on out on Pillsbury Drive is my in-laws um, 
original car dealership. So this yeah. is where Briggs was founded. It was it was available. Uh, all of our equipment was actually being stored here. So it was it was a little serendipitous that we came back to this location. But really, um, I I wasn't a huge fan of the location. We're not getting foot traffic from other restaurants or stores out here. The more I spent time out here, I realized that we could bring something even more unique to just another brewery or restaurant to Manhattan by adding the outdoor beer garden space, which fit perfectly. Uh, it, the trees, uh, the atmosphere, it was all already here. We just had to set it up. Yeah. Um, and, and to us, that's what really made this work. And kind of another cool aspect of that is being able to go back to the building that my in-laws started their company in, now the next generation, you know, we, we were able to breathe some new life into this this building, repurpose it, and it's worked out absolutely fantastic for us. And, and yeah, really happy with the space out here. Yeah. Uh, but to answer your question about Aggieville, once we decided to not be in Aggieville, we toyed around with different company names, obviously. We really felt like Aggieville is synonymous with Manhattan. There's a lot of history down there. Yeah. Uh, if you went to K-State or knew people that went to K-State, you've probably been into town during game days. Everybody has a story down in Aggieville. <laughs> and, and so we, we really wanted to keep that um, and just kind of build off of that aspect of Manhattan. Yeah. And eventually we will be down in Aggieville. Yeah. So. Well, and I think that's the, the cool part of what, what you've been able to do too, though, really is kind of pivot from like, okay, we're going here to catch the college traffic, catch all that stuff, but you've pivoted to, uh, you know, the beer garden isn't just out there for the beers and all that, all that stuff's obviously great too, but you've got the food, you've got the, uh, the, the games over here for the kids. And I, you know, I think that you've got a lot other plans that we'll probably hopefully get into here in a minute, but, uh, but it's not just that bar area. It's more of a family atmosphere, which is ironically enough for your your stage of life as well with bringing the kids in and, and everything there too. So I love that. I love being able to pivot with that side of it. Talk to us a little bit about what you guys offer here at Aggieville Brewing uh, and what kinds of beers, what, uh, what that looks like. Yeah, so like you mentioned, we do have 18 house-made beers on tap. Um, as well as one hard seltzer, so I guess 17 beers. Uh, we do want to have that seltzer option for those that may not be super into beer. Sure. Um, our our flagships really consist of just a handful of beers that we've seen throughout this year that we've been open, our top sellers and most asked for. So number one from day one has been our Everyman Light Lager. Yep. Uh, it's low alcohol there's not a lot to it it's very approachable and easy drinking and i think a lot of people that are not craft beer drinkers or think that they are are still able to enjoy a product that's made here it's made locally it's made in-house uh, but really with with having 18 beers on we're lucky that we can feature a wide variety and that's really our goal um, we we pride ourselves on the loggers so the every man is one of those we always try to keep four to six of those on tap. And and like I said, we really do have a mix of everything. IPAs and hoppy beers have been the craze now for, I don't know, the last five or 10 years. Yeah. Uh, we always have four or five of those on. But really outside of that, we're, we're lucky that we're able to play around seasonally with darker beers. We've got a handful of barrel aged beers coming out here in the next month or two that have been aging for want to say 15 or 16 months. Wow. Um, but we we really like to mix it up. Uh, always have a sour on, try to get some fruitier, lighter. Yeah. Uh, the fruited beers always go over really well, especially this summer. Um, so we really are fortunate to have that 18 tap space that we can we can reach everybody. Because me personally, I'm not gonna drink a porter or stout in the middle of summer, but there are people that are, they are dead set on drinking dark beer when it's 100 degrees out. I don't get it, but at the same, <laughs> exactly. at, at the same time, uh, we, we are more than happy to really keep a wide variety of different beers on. Yeah. So. so talk to us about the process of all that, right? I wanna know, I'm gonna ask it a couple different ways, but I wanna know like, what's your shortest timeline of beers to get ready for, for to serve? 
versus your longest and what does that process look like? Yeah, so our, our typical ale, because um, we've got two different styles of beer, beer, ale or lager, all of our ales average about two weeks from brew day on the equipment behind us to carbonated, served, it's ready to drink. So about two weeks on those, all of our lagers take minimum six weeks, most of them we like to go eight weeks. So that every man, we, we assume that that would be our best seller and it has been yeah. uh, because it takes two months and because we go through so much of it, we're brewing that about every three weeks. Wow. So we've always got two or three tanks of that beer going. Um, so it, it definitely takes a little more planning, trying to keep those four to six lagers on tap. Yeah. Um, and then outside of that, the barrel aged beers, we do minimum of 12 months in the barrel, but those, yeah those they are not on our timeline um so at about 10 11 months we start tasting them if it's there we'll pull it out uh we're going to be doing some bottles some single uh release bottles of those once those come out um and and those are those are great for kind of holiday season winter time uh typically the barrel aged stuff is higher alcohol it's much darker so I believe a lot of the stuff that we have back there in bourbon, uh, whiskey, and red wine barrels, um, they're all over 10%, if not 12 or 13%. Yeah. So that's definitely the longer process. We don't do many of those. Um, takes up a lot of real estate, sure and uh, but they're fun to have. They're fun to play around with, and kind of it, it's a good special release for us. Sure. So. What does that planning process look like? Like if you're if you're if you're brewing something that takes 12 months or more, what does that planning process look like for you guys? I mean, are you sitting down monthly, weekly, daily? Like, what does that look like for you? Uh, it's a mix of all of those. So yeah. we we try to look kind of big overview on the whole year of okay. In the summer, we want these couple styles. We sure. we know we want to do that, and then really we kind of fine tune it by month. Um, and that's really based on kind of sales. What are, what are our needs gonna be in two, three, four weeks from now? Um, but it also changes daily. Uh, so there are times towards the end of summer, right as football season hit, that we, we started burning through beer as volume started picking up. And so that was a week of, all right, well, we gotta do four brews this week instead of two that we had scheduled. So it, uh, it is a lot of long-term planning, but that's just kind of a, okay, let's, let's hope that we can do this on this schedule. But again, the beer is not on our schedule. Uh, so if something doesn't go as quickly or as slowly as we want it, I mean, we, we really have to be flexible. Um, at the end of the day, brewing, you gotta get from point A to point B and figure it out day of. Um, it's not like most jobs where you can come back tomorrow <laughs> and figure it out. So it's it's a lot of back and forth, long-term planning versus short-term planning. And I, I think that that was one of the aspects that maybe made me more interested in this industry. Um, I'm a very hands-on person, sure. um, not, super into the mundane routines of we're doing this every day so kind of having that challenge of things change daily weekly all right let's figure it out and get it done so it definitely keeps things interesting yeah no oh, that's awesome man and it's it's uh i guess so, so more to, to anybody watching don't be mad if they run out at some point right <laughs> <laughs> bear with them on it um but no i think that's that's i love that i love that because it is right it's uh it's flying I mean, you got to figure out on your on your go on it there. So, uh, so speaking to that, I feel like this is actually a pretty good segue to, you know, making pivots in the middle of it all. Um, you guys pivoted to kind of going towards food and things that way. So, talk to us a little bit about your menu uh, and what you guys offer out here. Yeah. So we kind of in the in the initial planning phases of this, we obviously knew we wanted to have a brewery. We felt like the restaurant side of it and the food side of it needed to also be involved with what we were doing. Um, so when looking at the restaurant side of things, we knew we didn't wanna be a processed frozen food, sure. we heat it up type of a place, but we felt like we could still do burgers and fries on a high quality level, but still make some tweaks to it sure. and, and make it unique. So 
one of my big goals when, when we were in the design phase of this, um, and may not be something that a lot of people know that we do, we, we have tried to create a kitchen and a food menu that's 100% seed or vegetable oil free. So okay. we fry everything in beef tallow, which is just rendered beef fat, essentially. Um, we use butter and olive oil if we're sauteing or cooking something on the grill. And about 95% of our menu is vegetable oil free. There are still a couple things that we're trying to phase out and, sure. and um, go away from that. It's not very, very easy to do anymore. You yeah. go to the grocery store, everything has vegetable and seed oils in it. So um, again, that was, that was something that we felt like the people that were kind of catching on to animal fat, animal protein versus, uh, I call them industrial seed oils basically, that they would care and, and respect the fact that we're doing that because it's not offered. Um, at many places, if any, in Manhattan. Sure. But at the same time, we wanted to do it in a way that the people who weren't concerned about that wouldn't notice and it wouldn't affect the end quality of what we were doing. Right. Um, so really kind of having that traditional burgers, fries, sandwiches, wraps, on top of the barbecue that we do as well, um, being in the heart of beef country, two hours away from Kansas City, one of the barbecue meccas in the United States. Um, we, we felt like that was a market in Manhattan that was still open for us and, and had opportunities for us. So um, we're still trying to perfect that. Kansas City barbecue has very high standards yes, and we, we hope to get up to that point at, at, some, at some time in the future. But um, yeah, really, really felt like beer and barbecue go well together. Um, so that the whole conception process of the menu, um, that was a lot of fun. We obviously had a lot of trial and error and a lot of tastings that uh, not feeling too great after you eat food for two or three straight hours. We just wanted to bring something different to Manhattan, but at the same time, not stray too far from what would be I guess popular and still approachable yeah. to most most of the guests here. So Ryan, talk to us about the the customer experience, right? So anybody looking to kind of come out here, um, how what should they expect whenever they do come into the the tap room uh, and get into the restaurant and everything there? Yeah. So I mean, to us, at the end of the day, um, we are selling beer and food. Our our goal is ultimately to sell an experience. We want anybody to come out here and feel welcome. And I think that's one of the unique things about the brewing industry uh, kind of as a whole. Uh, breweries are, are, from my experience, very welcoming, opening places. And so we really wanted to bring that aspect. Obviously, Manhattan is a fantastic community. There's a lot of support um, from residents and local businesses. So we wanted to bring that aspect in as well. So whether you're a longtime resident of Manhattan or you're just visiting, we, we want your experience here to feel like you are a regular. Um, and so that, that was our, our main vision is to have a fun, relaxing environment to really just, just be able to get away from everything. You can come in with your friends and family, kind of forget about anything else that's going on and just enjoy your time here. And so we, again, we, we were lucky to have the space that we do out here to provide that inside in the tap room, but then to also have the large outdoor beer garden where you can get the bigger groups together. Um, you can have your kids come out, the kids can run around, they can play corn, cornhole or goof off or do whatever they'd like. And you're not having to worry about your four-year-old sitting in a chair for an hour while you have a meal. Sure. And you can be comfortable, you can, you can feel at home. Um, and yeah, we, we just want everybody to feel welcome here and, and we strive to do that um, with every guest experience we have. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And I, I, guess, I guess for me, I think you've achieved that. I've been out here uh, around lunchtime, you guys have been always packed and I've been out here at uh, kind of towards the end of a day and, and seeing the beer garden out. They're packed with kids running around playing cornhole and everything else. So I think that's a, a fantastic uh, opportunity for anybody to come out and do that. I think that's a big thing too, right? Like the, the idea that you don't have to sit your kid 
at a chair for an hour or more and still get a good beer and be able to watch them kind of in an enclosed space too, which is kind of cool. So, um, well, let's, let, I want to kind of shift gears a little bit to your kind of your community collaboration. Uh, we've talked a lot about the different things that you've done with um, other breweries here in town, other businesses here in town, and just kind of being, uh, kind of diving into the community as far as that goes. Uh, talk to us a little bit about those collaborations. Yeah, um, so obviously Manhattan is very important to us. This is where my wife, Amber, and co-owner, I mean, we were both raised here. This is where our fam family is from, and we love the Manhattan community. So as much as possible, we try to work with other small local businesses. Um, and the collaboration part, I think one of the really unique aspects of the brewing industry is we don't look at other craft breweries as our competition. Um, our competition are the big breweries, Anheuser, Coors, yeah. and, and so we're really fortunate to have a good relationship with all the other local breweries in and around Manhattan. Uh, so we've been able to do a collaboration with Manhattan Brewing Company. Uh, we've. We've got one tentatively scheduled with all three of us, uh, Manhattan Brewing Company and Tallgrass Tap House, hopefully early next year as well. And so it really is a, a good sense of community to know that, yeah, we are competitors if you look at it from a business standpoint, but the way we go about things, we're not. Yeah. Um, we're always willing to provide a helping hand to each other. And I, I think that's really special and unique for our industry. But we, we really do, um, we wanna be able to provide a space out here and, and the beer garden is a great example where this coming year and we've, uh, we've got some ideas floating around where we can host larger events uh, that, that really connect with the community. They can get people together for networking. And, and really give back more, because uh, this is home to us. Sure. Um, and without the community support up to this point, I mean, we wouldn't be here. So yeah. really anything that we can do to get involved, uh, we're, we're looking for more ways to connect with local businesses. Beer collabs are very easy. Uh, one that we recently did for the Young Trustees Chili Cook-Off, uh, we partnered with uh, carpet cleanse yep. and Manhattan City Lifestyle magazine did the chili together but then we also came together and we did a collaboration brew day uh, in which we made an Arnold Palmer Belgian blonde ale for which turned out great we're we're going to be doing a large batch of that next year but nice. we we were able to um, provide back to the first tea charity uh, that carpet cleanse has been supporting for a long time and kind of do it in a fun way where we provide a beer that's golf themed with the Arnold Palmer sure. uh, Belgian and have some fun with it, but at the same time provide something back to the community as well. Yeah, um, and I can attest it was very good. <laughs> it was very good. Um, okay, well, that and I, and I love that, right? And I think that's kind of the neat thing that I've, that I've realized about um, with the craft brews and everything that way is how much you guys do collaborate and mm -hmm. kind of work together and help each other because you're right. I mean, I think the, the big boys of Anheuser and Coors and all those are going to be the ones that are going to be your competition. So I love, I love that you're doing that. Um, I feel like this is a good spot, right? Like what does the future look like for Aggieville Brewing and what, uh, what Maybe it's events, maybe it's expansion. What does the future look like for you guys here? We've got a lot of plans. We've got a lot of ideas. Um, just starting with the beer garden at this location, kind of this first year, we were really getting our legs underneath us, uh, trying to get service and atmosphere dialed in down there. We've got a lot of plans for next year though. Um, one of the bigger ones is hosting a beer festival. We'd like to have a beer fe festival here where we get the other breweries, you know, if we can get 10, 15, maybe 20 other local Kansas breweries that are around us to come out and feature their product and maybe get out to p people that haven't been able to, to visit their locations yet. Um, but also just working with other businesses to bring them out here for events and, and really, um, you know, support each other. We wanna do business with local communities and for, for us to kind of reciprocate by hosting them or having these other events. Um, we, 
This year kind of had a smaller dialed back Oktoberfest, but we want to get some more people involved next year, um, get some live, bigger live music events, some concerts going next year out here. Uh, and then outside of that, on the brewery side of things, uh, we do have plans kind of for expansion and growth. Uh, canning line early next year is what we're looking, okay. looking into. Nice. So we want to get some of our core brands, the Everyman, our Hot Bender Hazy IPA, which has been a big hit, start getting that out to the market. But we're, we're staying as much in Manhattan for as long as possible. We want to grow this very slowly and really build the relationship with the local community here before we kind of branch out. So, um, and then on top of that, we do have the Aggieville location. Uh, still have plans to go in down there and, and open a second tap room. We really like the direction Aggieville is going down there uh, with all the renovations that they're doing. That's, it's in the works, but um, with with just opening this year to be determined exactly exactly <laughs> just opening this year and uh kind of as much as we have going on out here we really want to make sure that we get this styled in sure. before we go to open that up but we really like the direction aggieville is going and we want to be a part of that kind of more i don't want to say different community but you know we want to be a part of that space as well and and really cement ourselves as aggieville brewing company sure let's say that somebody watching this video they want to reach out to you guys for a private event they want a private booking whether it be wedding party or holiday party or something that way uh how do they get a hold of you um let's talk about your location too because we really haven't given an address on here yet uh, and how do they go about booking that stuff yeah so our main location is out at 612 pillsbury drive uh, it's just right over the viaduct as you're leaving town or coming into town two minutes from downtown on points um, anybody looking for a private event wanting to host a larger group um, they can reach out to us either through phone the easy, easiest way is through our website. We have a link on our website to book a private party. And we've, we've hosted quite a few already this summer. Uh, we've had a lot of hail and farewells through the military, birthday parties, different events. Uh, graduation was a big one. Um, so with the beer garden space that when weather permits, that's the best option because there's a lot of room. Uh, 10,000 square foot beer garden. We can seat over 200 people out there. So even if you're not looking to rent the entire space, we can kind of section it off so that you have your own sure. own area to do these things in. Um, but yeah, we we are always open and willing to talk with anybody and you know try to try to make something work for for their event to make it their own, make it private, make it special, and and try to help them out with that. So awesome. What about your dining room hours? So we are open six days a week, uh, Tuesday through Sunday. We open at 11 a.m. every day uh, for lunch. Uh, we are open 10 p.m. during the week. Uh, we stay open until 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday. Close a little earlier on Sunday at 9. Uh, and then we all get a day off on Monday, kind of recruit, or recoup and regroup and, and kind of hit the ground running the next week. So yeah. I love that. So here's one I'm gonna kind of throw at you here. All right, uh, obviously you open, you're fairly new to the entrepreneurship side of it, mm -hmm. but uh, I ask this question in all of my interviews and everything that way. What have been, I'm gonna ask a two part question, right? What have been some of your biggest challenges? And then the other part is what have been some of your biggest successes slash uh, wins? So I think to us our, there were many challenges with opening any business, especially renovation and construction. Yeah. But I think the biggest one for us uh, was just the industry that we're in. The craft brewing industry the last 10 or 15 years has absolutely taken off, which is fantastic. Um, I wanna say 10 years ago, there were 3,000 or 3,500 craft brewers in the United States. We're pushing 10,000 now. Wow. And, and so um, it has become a much more saturated market, but we felt comfortable coming into Manhattan because there were, to me, that there's room for five or six breweries in Manhattan. Um, and, and so kind of finding our own, our own lane and all of that, and I think having the restaurant definitely helped. Uh, up to this point, 
most of our beer sales are in-house. So you can only get that beer here. And that's, that's a little bit where the craft brewing industry is turning. So the regional breweries, your Oscar Blues, Sierra Nevada, people have kind of gone away from the beers that you can get across multiple states. And, and they're now supporting the breweries like us and Tap House, Manhattan Brewing, that you can only find that if you go to them. And, and I think that's a wonderful thing for our industry, for small businesses. Um, but at the same time, there are now 10,000 craft breweries out there. So there, there was always some challenge with that as far as you know, making sure we were on par quality level. We were offering a mix of tradi traditional beers and kind of your one-off specialty, crazy off the wall idea of beers as well. Yeah. And, and I think that's where our, our selection of having 18 different beers on at any given time, we can have a good mix of that and do that. And, and so I think that's what kind of began as a challenge in that sense of a more saturated market has actually now helped us um, with being able to offering a little bit of everything. We know kind of what people are liking at this point. Sure. Um, that's one thing as brewers, we always have to tell ourselves, especially when you go professional and you're trying to sell this, we can't make the beer that we want to drink. We have, we have to make what the, what our guests want to drink. So, yeah. um, second part of that question. Successful success. When I, I think the beer garden and offering, you know, a different type of food menu as well. Um, like I said previously, Maybe not a lot of people understand that we are trying to be 100% seed and vegetable oil free. At the same time, we have had a lot of people come in and just, I don't, they're, they're excited that somebody's doing this now and that there is another option. And I, I think we're still in the early phases of that here in Kansas of kind of getting on that trend of getting away from the seed oils um, and, and really, I think that was a success of ours to be able to come into Manhattan and really kind of help push that and, and maybe interest other people that are on the fence about it and, and kind of showing that, no, you can do this and still be a normal restaurant, if you want to say that, yeah. um, and, and not stray too far away from that. But I think another success of ours is the beer garden space and that to me really is what made this location work for us, having that large outdoor venue that is unique to Manhattan. Um, there are some great outdoor spaces here. We felt like our location, uh, just surrounded by the trees out there, we, we wanted something that you felt like you were hanging out in your backyard or you're at a nice resort outside somewhere. Yeah. Um, really being able to offer that space, again, where the kiddos can run around. Uh, you can sit by the fire pit once it starts getting cooler, or you can have a nice seated dinner on the covered deck by yourself and have a little quieter space up there. So it's, it's really been a good mix for us. And yeah, just being able to, to host the larger events and groups out there. Um, there, there have been times that people were hesitant to come in cause they saw the parking lot was full. They came out back, realized there was still plenty of seating. So. Um, just just being able to have that outdoor space. Uh, I'm a big outdoor guy. I mean, if I can go camping or hiking, that's what I'm doing. And yeah. so to be able to have a large portion of our guest experience be outside, I, I think has really been great for us. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So before we wrap it up, uh, I always I always want to ask this question too. What advice? I get a lot of entrepreneurs that that watch this video or aspiring entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to anybody looking to start their own business? Maybe it's a brewing company, maybe it's something completely off the wall different than what you guys are, but what advice would you give to those entrepreneurs? Follow your dream. Um, I There were many times throughout this process that I thought I was crazy and yeah. why am I taking all this on? You gotta have faith though. If, if at the end of the day, the decisions that you're making, the process you're going through, uh, if you're at ease with that, you got to trust that. And there, throughout this whole process, there was a lot of, I guess, blind faith is a good word that 
you know, if we go about this the right way, it's going to work out. And um, obviously, you got to do your homework. Uh, you can't just go into it totally blind. Um, but if if you have a dream, you want to start your own company, or you have a crazy new idea that nobody's done before, don't be afraid to fail. Um, I I think a lot of people in our society are kind of taught as a child um, to avoid failure. I, I think that's a good thing. That's, that's when you learn, that's when you grow, and you never know what's gonna happen. Um, I, I think the, I would have more regrets if this is what I wanted to do and I didn't pursue it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, follow your dream, listen to your heart. Um, your, your gut feeling, they, that's a saying for a reason. I mean, if you're uneasy about something, you know, reconsider it. And there were, there were a lot of times throughout this process that um, our original plan, you know, it wasn't wasn't as appealing as it was when we started. And we we had to change, and we we had to kind of come up with new options. And I'm very Type A. This is the plan. This is what we're doing. And learning that kind of early on in this phase. Um, that you gotta you gotta make changes. You gotta roll with it. You gotta do what feels right. Um, I I think that was a big part of this whole process. But um, yeah, follow follow your dream. Love it. Before we wrap it up, anything else you want to add? Uh, big shout out. I mean, to the Manhattan community, everybody that supported us. We're we're very happy to be a part of uh, the community here, and and kind of help grow what Tallgrass Tap House and Manhattan Brewing Company have done on the craft beer side of things and be a part of that with them. Um, it's a great industry. Craft beer, I mean, in the last 10 years has, has come a long way and it's it's always fun to I don't talk to somebody that they only drink Natty Light. Well, they try <laughs> one of our beers and, oh, I actually do like craft beer. But um, yeah, just, Huge thank you to the people that have supported us, the people that work here that have put in countless tireless hours. My wife, Amber, for putting up with all this and, and helping out throughout the entire process. And um, yeah, really happy with how the first year has gone. Uh, we're still an infant, we're not even a year old yet, but really, really also excited about the future and kind of what we can continue to grow into and provide and give back to the Manhattan community. So. No, I love that. I love that. So, and I'll tell you guys too. So, you know, first off, thank you so much for, for watching the video this far. It, it's been a really, it's, Ryan, it's been a lot of fun having you on here too, man. So I want to say thank you to you uh, for joining me, but I promise you guys come in. If you haven't been here, come in, try the food. It's delicious. The beer is obviously really good as well. Uh, and you'll, and what we've talked about this whole video, the, the atmosphere in here is just something that you really can't it's hard to duplicate, I think, and, and I think the outdoor space is is fantastic, and it's just something. I have a nice sunny day on a on a back on a back patio and drinking a beer is something about it, right? So, um, what I want to say to you guys is thank you so much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. If you do enjoy this content, please go and hit that subscribe button. Go and hit that little bell so you get notified of any future content. And please, 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 if you have anybody that's interested in checking out Aggieville Brewing or coming out and just kind of seeing what they're about, share this video with them. Let them see kind of where the, where the conception of this idea came from. Uh, and so you get a little bit more of a story. So when you come in here, you're gonna know what what type of oil the the food is in and and what kind of quality you're getting with the beers and everything with that and so i i think that that's a big piece that i i really want to kind of focus on too for you is that uh the little bit the different nuances and things that come with that so thank you guys so much for watching ryan again thank you so much for joining me man i appreciate it and until next time thanks for watching local legends of flint hills <laughs>